Hi, so this video we're going to talk about design decomposition. So at this point you would have probably have created um, an overall software architecture. Now while that software architecture as an overall diagram just identifies the major components at this point, now the job is to start to uh, decompose each one of those components to um, and successfully refine it until it becomes so clear that you can actually build it or you can pass it off to a totally independent team who can actually sit down and build each of the modules um, sorry each of the components now there are Wasserman he was a software engineer when, um, many years ago uh, he, he suggested that there are uh, one of five main ways you can go about um, decomposing each one of the, the major components in your system architecture uh, in order to actually break it down to the level that we can actually move on to the implementation step. Uh, these five ways are you have the modular decomposition, data oriented decomposition, event oriented decomposition, outside in design and object oriented design. So modular decomposition is based upon assigning functions to components. The designer begins with a high level description of the functions that are to be implemented that's coming out of your software architecture and then you build lower level explanations of how each component will be organized and related to the other components. In data oriented decomposition the design is instead based on external data structures. Uh, the high level description depicts the general data structures and lower level de descriptions provide detail on what data elements will be involved and how will they be related. Um, a lot of the times people use like YAR modeling diagrams to start with data oriented uh, decomposition. Uh, the next uh, type of decomposition that is done is e an event oriented one. This design is based on events that the system must handle and uses information ab about how events change the system state. Uh, the high level description catalogs all the various states and the lower level description describe how state transformations take place. Uh, so that being said, uh, a lot of the times uh, you use say state machines and event traces in e event oriented decomposition. The next type of, of decomposition is outside in decomposition. So here in this approach we treat the system to be decomposed as a black box. Then what you do is you you uh, think of all the different types of user inputs to that black box and how the black box will react to all those possible user inputs. So the high level description lists all those possible user inputs and then the low level description will then address what the system does with each input including every single output that would be produced and that's outside in decomposition the last of the five main ways that you can decompose the system is object oriented decomposition this design identifies the classes of objects and their relationships at the highest level each object type is described and then at the lower levels the object attributes and actions are discussed um, the design explains how the objects are related to one another and how they interact. So that brings me to um, decomposition and modularity. So a design can be derived now uh, by working from the system, system data de descriptions, events, user inputs, high level functional descriptions or a combination of those and then you have to create a hierarchy of information with increasing detail and that brings us to levels of abstraction uh, what that means is so you would have started with the, the generic system component at the start you would have probably broken that down using one of the five techniques that we just described uh, into some set of subcomponents and then you would go and then take each one of those subcomponents and turn and break that down even further in another level of decomposition and then you keep doing that over and over and over until you have enough detail such that implementing each one is um, a brain dead activity and that's pretty much it for system decomposition uh, this this is a very easy thing to grasp in abstract 
not a very easy thing to grasp um, in reality. A lot of the times what happens is that uh, people would start off with this, the software architecture. Perhaps, perhaps maybe they would identify some of the major system uh, components and they would not actually break that down far enough before they start to actually build the system. That's, that's a trap. Don't fall into that trap. You have to keep um, iterating over and over and over until you keep breaking it down more and more. You have to keep asking yourself, okay, can I actually just build this thing? Is this simply enough that I can just pass it to someone else who is not me? Um, and they would be able to build this uh, uh, thing. So this this is not a easy process to go through. It actually gets quite tedious and it's difficult in practice to actually do. And a lot of the times there, eh, there is no set way of understanding when can we stop. Sometimes it's about discretion, about understanding your development team and their level of understanding and the level of detail to which you must provide. But it's very easy to fall into the trap of shortcutting the step and not breaking it down enough. Um, that, that again is a very bad, bad idea. And well, that brings me to the end of this video. Thanks for watching.